Welcome to Freedom Cast, where your hosts, Jordan and Miranda, show you how to get just a little bit more out of life. Are you ready to leave normal behind? All right, guys, welcome to Freedom Cast, episode number 11. 11. Woo! Episode letter 11. We are so ready to have you guys join us today. We're going to have a fun episode. We have been doing a little bit too many serious things lately. That made sense. A little bit too many serious things. Uh, the last one, uh, well, the last couple ones we've done um, were interesting, and we really enjoyed doing them, but they might have been a little bit too serious for our liking, so we're jumping back to the other end of the spectrum. Today, we're going to be talking about our favorite moments from The Office. Uh, because even if, we can. What did you say? Because we can. Yeah, because we can. Why not? So we're going <laughs> to talk about our moments from The Office. Miranda and I have watched that uh, ep- that show uh, all nine seasons, four times through now. Is it four? Are you sure that's an accurate number? I feel it, like it could be more. It has been four. I'm, <clears throat> I'm a hundred percent sure. Wow, that's that's confidence, folks. I got my numbers. Before we jump into that, though, Miranda's going to talk about a cool stat that she learned today. We're going to talk about that briefly, just for fun, and then we're going to jump into our favorite moments. Hopefully, you'll stay tuned and listen to this, even if you're not an Office fan. We're just going to be having fun, being a little bit more goofy than normal, uh, and just enjoying being on a podcast together. So, Miranda, shoot with your special, uh, awesome, really cool, really awesome, pretty weird but makes sense, stat. Whew, that was a lot of buildup. <laughs> the anticipation is killing me. It's killing me. It's killing and me I know, too. And I know the stat. So today at lunch... <laughs> Do you lunch, remember it? Yes. <laughs> I, I usually read articles sometimes at work during my lunch break. And today I was reading one that was talking about how Regal Cinemas is going to be changing how they charge people for movies. So starting next year, they were saying they're going to charge more for popular movies and less for the less popular movies. And in this Okay, article, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's not the stat. That's just me telling you where I found the stat. And well, I that's a lot of information. Thank you for that, though. Yeah, I'm not sure how credible the stat is, just as a little caveat. But it's all right. in the article, it said that movie theaters make 85% of their profit from the concession stand. Wait, what? 85% of their profits from the concession stand. Wait, what? 85. <laughs> that is, I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense, but that's insane. It is pretty crazy when you think about it. I mean, when you go, it's usually on a date and, you know, or you're just splurging a little. So it's, it's like, oh, you know, we can do this. We can pay $20 for one bag of cop- popcorn that would normally cost 50 cents. <laughs> yep. So that's my fun little stat. Um, Jordan, I think at some point we should do a podcast just on movie theaters and how they're not really keeping up with the times because we love talking about that. Yep. And they're dying, folks. I'm sure you I'm sure you probably even recognize it. Uh, you go to a movie even that's been out a couple weeks, even in a busy place uh, like where we're at right now. We go to, um, you know, we've gone to Concord, not Concord, New Hampshire, but Concord, North Carolina. Um, Concord Mills is a mall pretty big place we went to spider-man homecoming about two weeks after it came out uh, and there was no one else in the theater pretty much at all so i know that's pretty normal especially for maine Uh, i used to go to movies up there and it would be just me and my friends even if it was a brand new movie i know that seems a little crazy um but it's maine so that makes sense but it's crazy it's crazier to me that it happens around here too yeah i think it's just everybody's streaming now streaming's the thing if you can watch a whole season of you know your favorite tv show all at once and the comfort of your home with just like a small monthly fee why would you pay money to go to the theater yep and we love going to the movies like i always tell miranda hey you want to go to the movies and we're like yeah let's see what's out you know we watch a couple of previews and we're like nah we're just gonna <clears throat> rent a movie on the xbox and uh, get dinner here we're going to spend a lot less money we're going to have just as good of a time so we will talk of that about that more in another episode we're going to jump into our favorite office moments uh, hopefully 
you have seen The Office, like I said, uh, but if not, definitely stick with us too, um, and maybe you'll want to watch it by the end. It's on yeah, Netflix. It's, There'll be a revolt if it ever comes off Netflix, and me and Miranda will be one of the first to sign the petition, uh, and I know several of you out there will sign as well. Do they sign petitions for revolts? or? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and if you haven't seen it, definitely give it a shot because it is our all-time favorite TV show. We struggle a lot with after we finish watching the whole the whole show, all seasons, we always kind of get stuck like what do we watch next? We can't just immediately go back to the first episode. So, that's where we are right now. We're in our TV black hole right now because we don't we finished The Office probably a few weeks ago. Yep. So, but we have been watching on Netflix different nature shows, which have been really interesting. We watched Frozen Planet, and now yep. we're watching The Hunt. The Hunt, and I love dun, it. Dun, dun. It's awesome. Dun, dun, dun. We learned all about ants and foxes and birds. Yep. So. Yeah, if anyone out there has a recommendation for other things we can watch besides crazy nature things, please let us know. We'd love to jump into it. Uh, and no, we're not going to walk- watch Parks and Rec because we do not like that show. We've tried it. I've given it a chance. My friends out there, everyone that has recommended to me, I'm sorry. Can't jump on board with that show. Um, I don't know about Miranda yet either. (laughs) That was pretty harsh. I definitely That was pretty harsh. I may take that back a little bit. I thought it was funny. I would definitely give it more of a chance. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I'll reconsider. We only watched, what, two episodes? Yeah, I'm pretty open-minded, so. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right, I will let Miranda start. She will talk about uh, the number one best thing. Uh, Well, actually, are we going to start with the number one? Yeah, makes sense. This is the number one best thing because the best part about The Office is Jim and Pam and their relationship. And And I agree, and I'm a guy, and I definitely agree. It's the best part of the show by far. It makes me cry every time. Yeah, so we just love watching the whole like from beginning to end just to see their relationship and how it progresses and the the good times and the bad times and they just the show did such a good job of slow playing it and a lot of tv shows i feel like they start dating or they get engaged and it's the second season jim and pam i mean they didn't even start dating until how many seasons in i think it was either the end or the third or the end of the fourth that he finally popped back in and asked her i never can keep track of where the seasons are because we just let let netflix autoplay it so i don't know where one (laughs) season ends and the next one begins but and we go through them so fast it's just a whirlwind but yep so they just did such a good job you just feel like you are part of that relationship pretty much they um they do if you have watched the show end up they get married they have kids then they have marital issues and then they recover from that and then jim has kind of these big opportunities and pam kind of holds him back at first but then at the end it's all good because she decides that you know it's worth taking risks and doing a big move and seeing what can happen spoiler alert i know spoiler (laughs) if you haven't seen it by now i'm sorry Yes, it's it's been out for a long time. So, yeah, but great story arc. Uh, story arc. <laughs> story <laughs> arc. <laughs> it's a story arc, guys. Yeah, great story arc. Just really good. It's very real. Would you agree, Moran? It's very real, and it just feels uh, it feels raw and real in a way that just it's n- it's not something you see that much on television anymore. And I know that's always what people say. Oh, they don't show the same things on television anymore. But it's rare to get. Uh, two actors like that that are just playing a part so well that you just feel for them. Even on the fourth time watching it through, you still feel the same way. It's so authentic and definitely even like my, I'm so impressed by the parts where they are having marital issues because it's just so, it feels so real and it's not, it doesn't feel like you're watching a TV show. It just feels real and it's just so cool to see them overcome that and you just feel like you were part of it and... I mean, we get very engaged with this show, and I think that's cool, and that's a testament to it being a good show. Yep. All right, favorite moment number two. I will jump in with this one. Uh, Anyone remember Bell Schnickel? Chia or fear? Bell Schnickel's here. (laughs) (laughs) I love that episode so much. When he's just smacking Jim with a little stick that he had and said, what did he, what did he say? Impish. Yeah. (laughs) You are impish. (laughs) Yeah, that episode was so funny and i just anything with dwight 
I said Jim and Pam are like my favorite, but Dwight is my favorite too. So we will keep changing our favorites probably throughout this top twenty five moments thing. So just bear with us. Yeah, because they're all they did such a good job casting, and they're all they say each character stays completely true to its character the whole way through. Yep, and even the episode where Jim, this is uh, best moment. Their top best moment number three, Jim dressing up as Dwight. I know that's one ep- that's if you're an Office fan, uh, you are probably checking out on YouTube every once in a while just to watch this again because this is hilarious. Um, Jim dressing up as Dwight, sitting there saying "Bears beats Battlestar Galactica," <laughs> and then he goes "Michael," <laughs> so awesome. And he asks Dwight like, "Which uh, which bear is the greatest?" <laughs> <laughs> which he says, "Which bear is best?" <laughs> <laughs> and he says, "Dwight says, well, they're typically two schools of thought." <laughs> and he he has an answer already. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jim goes, "What does he say?" He say he goes, he goes like, "Wrong." <laughs> I don't remember. Black bears. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, so and funny. then Dwight goes, "What are you? Wait, what are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I love that part. So another part, top moment that's just absolutely perfect is when Michael, who was also my favorite character. Yes, also mine too. As a side note, (laughs) every time when he leaves the show, he leaves the show before the end of the... What season did he leave? Yeah, I think he left in season There's like a whole season without him. They spent season nine without him, yeah. Well, he comes back for like the season finale, but yeah. I I think that's further down. Don't do that one yet. Every time he le like when he leaves, I just feel sad every time we watch mm-hmm. it. And I just am like, I miss Michael. I wish Michael were here. <laughs> so one of the funniest parts was Number when four. he was having financial difficulties and he comes out and he says, I declare bankruptcy. <laughs> and he like yells it at the top of his lungs to the office. <laughs> and then later on, um, uh, Oscar goes in with him and then he's like, "Michael, you realize that you can't just say that you dec- that you know you, that you're bankrupt and that's what's going to happen." And then Michael says, "Well, I didn't say it. I declared it." <laughs> it's so funny. So awesome. I love how Michael uses all the like the he messes up words and it's just oh my gosh, it cracks me up every time. Such a good show. Another episode with the garden party episode. Uh, Jim took the time to write an entire book out to, for Dwight and he sold one copy of the book. For to Dwight, uh, I don't know how he ended up doing that. That's pretty cool. I don't know how you self-publish a book and only sell it to one person, but that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, and Dwight actually reads it and then puts on everything. Uh, so many good parts in that episode, uh, especially when Dwight has to declare uh, whoever comes in, um, whoever walks by him and declares them to the whole party. So funny. So funny. Yeah, but that's great the garden party is a good one and then they have the dancing at the end i love that too with the office they throw in musical numbers and dancing and just random random things which this is another side note i just love the office uh (laughs) those initial scenes the little scenes before they even play the intro music are so well thought out and just it's just so impressive they're so good but that's once again they don't we don't have that in television nowadays yeah <laughs> tv these days is just yep i don't even know okay miranda number six number six prison mike i was gonna try to do the voice i don't think i can do it this is prison mike prison mike those dementors were flying around the prison <laughs> he's talking about the dementors in the in prison <laughs> and he thinks that that's a real thing <laughs> <laughs> that's all we need to say about that because that's just yep so funny All right, number seven, Dwight's phone interview where he ended up taking all his clothes off and doing all kinds of crazy things uh, when he was in the break room. Um, Of course, Jim was playing a prank on him, but eventually he was applauded for saving the company, so that was an awesome end to that, but it was one of the funniest. Probably That was probably one of my favorite and most funny moments of the show. That was just hilarious because Dwight's like freaking out and screaming in the phone saying, no, don't, don't sell Dunder Mifflin. And they're going on. I don't even remember what they talk about. It's just funny. It's, it's hysterical. And he's just in the break room, like stripping down on the phone, freaking yeah. out. <laughs> they, they kept telling him, they said, we can't really hear you. It must be like the, your shirt making noises. And he was just like freaking out. Like, is that better? <laughs> it's awesome. Oh, I laughed just thinking about all these parts. Yep. <laughs> so number eight, one of the best parts of The Office, 
was when Michael was using his GPS and he drove right into the lake, <laughs> which was awesome because it's just it's just funny because they play on like life life things. Just they make them more dramatic. So that's something that people do. Like, oh, the GPS is telling me to turn right, but this sign says like exactly where I need to go in the other direction. <laughs> and usually you trust the GPS, so it's yeah. just funny. I wouldn't live without GPS. I would have no idea how to get anywhere. Miranda's my GPS when I don't have it. Well, when I don't have my GPS. Yeah. When I'm driving by myself, I have to use a GPS. When I'm driving with Miranda, we use Miranda. Well, sometimes. Unless I don't know where I'm going. Yeah. I'll let Miranda say number nine because I look down and number 10 is my favorite moment. It's the most funny, funny of the moment in the office. Yeah. Number nine is Asian Jim. So he hires, they have a friend that he hires who's an actor and is tall, looks kind of like Jim, but is Asian. So he comes in and he pretends that he is actually Jim. And it's another Dwight prank, obviously, because that's one of the major themes of the show that comes up all the time. And it's just always so funny to see how it plays out. So Dwight's like, you know, that's not you. But then they, of course, Jim goes so far as to have a picture taken and on his desk and he switches it out with his Asian family. <laughs> so awesome. And he, like, the actor kisses Pam. And <laughs> yep. It's just so funny because it, it's never just a little prank. It's always, it's got to be big. Yep, got to be a big deal. <clears throat> and speaking of pranks, number 10 is the best prank, I think, in the entire nine seasons and it's, so, it's such a short little moment, but it's so hilarious. Um, they end up, Dunder Mifflin, the Dunder Mifflin crew, the crew of the office, ends up going down to Florida for a meeting. Uh, and Jim had kids at that point. So he and Dwight was actually waking everyone up at the crack of dawn. And they showed like a, a nice little monologue of him waking everyone up, uh, smacking people in the face, pouring water on people. Uh, Jim went in to do that to Dwight's or Dwight went in to do that to Jim's room. But Jim, they, sh they, uh, they snap the, the camera over to Jim, and Jim's like, I have kids. I'm up at 5.15 every day. He's like, I already did this and this and this. And he's like, then I realized what I wanted to spend my time doing. Uh, and he faked his own murder, and it was hilarious. And then the end of that scene, he falls out of the closet. It's just the funniest. It's, it's hilarious. <laughs> the best. And of course, Dwight comes in, and he's like, Jim, wake up. And then Jim just falls out of the closet. Yep. They like totally fake him out. They have like the writing on the wall and Jim, Jim wrote on the wall, like in like red that looked like blood. He wrote, it was Dwight. And <laughs> Dwight said, it wasn't me. And then Jim falls out of the closet. And, like he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, number 11, one of the best moments was when Dwight became his own assistant to the assistant manager. So Jim assistant to the assistant regional manager yes As the assistant to the assistant regional oh, manager it's lengthy I think. but jim becomes his his second in command when dwight becomes um in charge and jim just it's another prank really he his whole yep. plan was to make dwight his own assistant to the assistant regional manager did i say that right you got it so he goes through a whole bunch of tests and every time Dwight competes and Jim just looks at him and goes, uncanny. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So Jim called it at the end. Dwight named himself the assistant to the assistant yep. regional and manager. Jim said in the beginning of that, he said, and by the end of the day, Dwight will crown himself the assistant to his assistant. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> what's the next one here? Oh, yeah, the Dundies. They did several episodes of the Dundies. Just hilarious. Michael hands out awards for um, really inappropriate things in the office. Uh, he hands out a, an award to Pam for being the longest engaged without actually getting married. Uh, eventually, he gives her an award um, for the whitest shoes the in the office. Sneakers. And she gets so excited and so happy that she kisses Jim for the first time. That's just an aside. That was kind of a funny moment in their arc but uh any any episode with the dundies was hilarious and awesome and michael takes them so seriously that's <laughs> it's awesome yep. so number 13 and creed is also my favorite character because creed he's in every season he's in like most episodes and he usually only has one line one short phrase 
but it's always hysterical. Yep. <laughs> and didn't you say that at first they weren't going to keep him, but they thought it was so funny they just ended up keeping him on the show? Yeah, I, th- I read that somewhere. That was a while ago. Yeah, I don't think he was going like, to stay on the show, but I think people just liked him. And I just – he's so creepy, but it's just so funny. Every time he just pops in, and you're like, oh, yeah, Creed. <laughs> so yep. when the bus um, – they had the work bus because – they what was it they found in the office that they made Dwight fix? Oh, like, like radon or something. The, yeah. It was another gym prank. He made it happen. So instead of just giving everybody off work, Dwight creates a work bus. Work bus. And so they start. <laughs> they go just because they want to get pies, obviously. And on their trip, they stop and they find Creed hitchhiking. And he's he gets on the bus and he says, ah, I was just playing hooky from work today. And then he looks up and it's the whole yep. office. <laughs> Everyone's in looking the bus. at him like, what? <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, oh the, the timing of this show is just impeccable. Like, just when you think it can't get any funnier, like, they do stuff like that. Like, I know that some of our moments really are like the shortest moments of the show, but there's just like, they have so many just great short moments moments it's amazing um another one of our favorite moments that we for whatever reason whenever we see it we play it over and over again because um wow i forgot who plays michael scott i, I get blanked on his name who plays michael scott <laughs> why can't, why can't steve carell steve carell i just had to steve, think about it yeah that's funny i knew it was like i was like steve we'll steve carell is an <laughs> absolutely fantastic actor um the way he says some things Uh, It just doesn't even make sense how he can keep his face like he does while saying what he does. Uh, He was trying to help one of his employees, Meredith, and he looks to her and he's like, uh, this was when she was, she basically kept talking when she shouldn't have. She kept trying to say things in in front of HR and he was trying to stop her from going crazy and saying too much. And he says, I'm trying to help you, you stupid bag. (laughs) And it was just, it was the funniest thing. I know you, you stupid bag is not the nicest thing to say, but it was so hilariously funny because he said it with a smile on his face like he was trying to like get her out and like there's no way that any other actor could have said it like that with his facial expressions like I mean there's so many times when you know like he was the perfect Michael Scott and that was just one of those moments yeah it was just such good acting and that was number 14 yes number 15 is when Michael Scott returns for the final episode to be the best man the or best just best just schmench Bestest mensch, I think. Bestest, Bestest mensch, mensch for Dwight's wedding, and yep. this is in the last episode, and you're not expecting it, and then you see Steve Carell there, and you just get so happy to see him, yep. and he finally got his family, he finally got um, the kids, and just what he the whole time in the whole show, he just always wants to be loved, really, and to find love and. It's just so cool at the end that he he gets Holly and he gets a family and he's just so awesome. So happy. Uh, next, number 16, Gutenbrunk, number one. Or this may have been number two. I couldn't actually remember, but it was one of the best ones. Uh, Jim gets out of the limo and gets Dwight and everyone else, and Dwight gets to shoot off a bazooka. Awesome. Just awesome. So random. Like, what? Like, what are they doing? Uh, hilarious. And it's just another one of those moments that's just cool to see how Jim and Dwight actually ended up becoming friends in the end. That's number 18. That's skipping ahead a little bit, uh, that Jim and Dwight become best friends. But that's um, just just an awesome part of the show, that their, their arcs are able to uh, overcome their difficulties of really kind of being rivals and hating each other for a while and then being friends in the end. It's so cool because they do have a lot of, it's always pranks, it's always trying to get each other, but then by the end of the show, they, you know, like they just love each other, and it's awesome. That was 16 and 18. Miranda will say 17. 17. And then we'll jump on to 19 and then beyond because there's a bunch of Jim and Pam moments that we wanted to highlight. Yes. So when Daryl gets really drunk at, was it the Christmas party? Yeah. Because he was upset that Jim wasn't going to take him on to his new opportunity. And he falls backwards onto the table, and then the table smashes, and it's just physical comedy, but it was just very well done. It was just, like, normally in a show, that just wouldn't be funny, I think. But there was something about, like, just the way they did it. Again, like, The Office is so amazing, because they do things different than other shows, and it was just so 
hilarious. It's just one of those moments in a TV show you just want to rewind and watch. Rewind. What am I, in a VCR stage? You just want to back up and watch it over and over again. I used to watch movies on VCR all the time. I had VHSs growing up. I'm not ashamed. Hey. Some of you might not know what that is, and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like most people know what VHS are. But... You know what? I don't know if they do. I was actually – I remember when – like the DVD player came out, I was all upset because I was like, what about the VHS player? Because I was, you know, just clinging to the old. I wasn't ready to accept the new. Yep. All right, so 1920 and 21 are all Jim and Pam moments. Miranda can go over those ones real quick. Awesome. So when Pam finally speaks her heart when they go to the beach, and this is a beach at some lake in Pennsylvania, and she walks across the coals um, and... The whole episode is kind of about Michael trying to find a good person to be the next manager because he, at the time, thought he was moving on. Mm -hmm. And Pam finally gets the nerve to tell Jim that she misses being just friends with him at that time because he was dating, uh, what's her face? I forget her name. Karen. Karen. And it's just a cool moment because a lot of times you feel like Pam is a very slow progressor and you feel yep. like come on pam what are you doing and just that was a really cool pam moment because she came out of her shell there and you could tell she definitely grew yep uh and then 20 when jim pops back in when pam's doing the interview um just to talk into the camera and jim pops back in and he finally asked her out, her out. Date. And it's beautiful. <laughs> and Miranda's gonna start crying in our podcast. No, it's okay because I, like I said, I cry at all these episodes. So, <laughs> so twenty one. Um, this one was. It's just I love this moment every time I get excited when this one comes. So when Jim oh, and Pam one, are having this one's a tearjerker. They're having their marital issues. Get and the tissues ready. <laughs> at this point in time, Jim's um, commuting to Philly half the week, and it's just they have a lot of tension, and Pam's mad at him for accepting this job and not talking to her, and just a whole lot of things, a lot of normal marital things that can happen. Yeah, real-life stuff everyone could potentially go through. It's so cool how the show takes that on. And he's about to leave in a cab, and Pam like runs down because he forgot his coat in the office or something. And then it's so cute because he, he does the thing where he, like, grabs her by the elbow and, like, turns her around and then hugs her. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's so cute. <laughs> I'm a and hopeless it, romantic. <laughs> uh, and it's and you can see the tension there, too, and the way they do it. Like, she doesn't hug back right away. Uh, they're such amazing actors because they just made that so real. Um, she doesn't hug him back right away because she's she's in pain. She's like, I don't know. She's like, I don't know if I want this. And then it's like, they go like three or four. I mean, three or four seconds. It's five a or long six. hug. It's, it's a while. And he just like, he's fully committed. And then she finally, you know, gives him a hug, hug back. and It's so symbolic and it's so beautiful. Yep. It's so good. All right. Done with the sappy moments. We're on to some more funny stuff. Number 22, threat level midnight. Uh, Michael actually spends uh, a lot of his life putting together a um, golden face. Golden face. It's just a random, funny moment in the show. We actually get to watch a video that Michael put together uh, throughout his years in the office. Uh, he actually put it together, uh, and he was a secret agent star in that show, and Jim was golden face, and Dwight was a robot after all. <laughs> yeah. It's just so funny, the the movie he creates and at first he was taking it seriously and he got mad because everyone was laughing they thought it was a comedy so he stopped it and then they were watching it again and he was finally ready to show him again so everyone was very serious and trying <clears throat> then to he started their, laughing yeah trying to be in their best behavior <laughs> all right miranda scranton what the electric city scranton what the electric city love that part of the show we actually go by a sign uh, every time we go to our boot camp that just says uh, electric electricity or electricities i'm not even sure what it's for it's for some kind of business every time we go by i say miranda scranton what and she goes <laughs> the electric city it's awesome eventually we're going to take a picture by it just to have but we haven't done it yet we need to we need to do it number 24 we love how the office ends that it, should be number 25 actually that should be number it's one it's both it's both so a lot of shows i feel like you have a lot of build up and you're so excited for it and then it ends and you just feel kind of 
hollow. I know for me, um, How I Met Your Mother, I loved that show, and then I feel like it just got worse and worse the last couple seasons. And uh, then... Boo, yeah, that show stunk. <laughs> <laughs> but we loved it. But It, just it was started, a good show. It started going downhill, and then the ending wasn't, we didn't like it. And I know, I never actually really watched Lost, but I know people were like upset about that, too. Lost was frustrating. Yeah, but... I don't. I can't really say that one because I never really watched it. Actually, I feel like but. most shows that I've watched have frustrating end- endings. Sloss wasn't good. Dexter's ending was frustrating. I never got to the end of Star Wars: The Clone Wars, the animated series. I'm still working on that. But are they still making those? Or no, no, huh? they cut them off. Sadly, no, that's, that is sad. So. Actually, you know that they cut it off before it was even finished. Oh really? Yeah, they mm-hmm. kind of they were expecting to do another season, so the show didn't even wrap up. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of loose ends. <laughs> That's what like I love. shows like Firefly and then Freaks and Geeks that only had like one season. Sad. Sorry. What were yeah. you saying? That's why I love The Office because it ends and I mean, everybody's life isn't perfect at the end. It's not like all, all roses. I mean, it's pretty much all good things, but it's just cool because it ties up. It ties up everything in a nice little bow, but there's still room. You know, there's still growing and have all their lives ahead of them and it's just they did a really good job making it feel real because they just made it they left you with that like little optimism for the future but still satisfied with where they were at yep and there's a mathematical term called the optimal stopping point and they hit that perfectly they stopped exactly where the show should have stopped some might argue with that and say they should have stopped when michael left um I was fine with the last season. It was a good time to wrap everything else up. If they had stopped before that, it wouldn't have worked out. But number 25, see if you can remember this song. We're going to sing it for you real fast. I am not the greatest singer, but I'm still going to do it just because we're having fun in this episode and being crazy. I'm going to let Miranda start us out, though. What's I forget the line now. Do, 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 do. Yeah, you got it. Sons and daughters. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I don't know all the By words. By the but... waters. Yeah. <laughs> we, That's not it. We build our house. We, so yeah, we he goes, we know. build our house. How? Wait, we no. We build our <laughs> homes. <laughs> aluminum. We, we fill our mouths with cinnamon. <laughs> See, I did it there. I just, I stole the show on that one. You anyway. did. I messed it up. Yeah, like, you messed it up. It's I didn't all right. know where to start. It's all good. That's one of our favorite moments. Just, I don't know. So something about that song and like The Office. We're like, uh-huh. no, we love it. Uh, that was when Dwight was on the farm and he decided to court Esther. Uh, we just love that, that song. And, you know, just when they do throw in those random songs it's and those so random, random moments. It's so random. It's not a musical show. But when they do not- throw it in, they go all in. They're like we're gonna do this right oh you know one we didn't even add number 26 bonus because i just thought of it when michael was leaving the office and they sang to him oh yeah that was awesome what is it like three thousand forty eight hundred twenty eight minutes i don't remember the number's wrong but that's kind of what it was whatever the minute song was yeah from what rent. It's called? minutes seconds i don't know what it's called but it's from rent Oh, it's from Rent? Yeah, oh, that's but cool. they changed the numbers to match the hours he worked at the office or something. Oh, that was so um, cool. That was so sad because they knew he was leaving and he was like, I love you guys, but I need Holly. And it just all made sense. It's all for love. Yeah, it's a show about love and that's why we love it. It's such a good show. Yep. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this episode, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, go on and leave us a rating. Either way, we definitely appreciate it. Um, I know there wasn't a lot of um, mind blowing content here but we just wanted to do something fun Uh, Miranda and I love this show we love talking about it so we were smiling this whole time and having a good time so hopefully you enjoyed listening to this just about half an hour episode Um, if you haven't seen The Office go and watch it now and if you have seen it go and watch it again because we're gonna watch it again soon probably the humor always holds up it's always funny every time we see it like the jokes never get old so definitely Check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, I hope you did enjoy this episode. It was a little different, but I feel like every episode we do is a little different, so that's fine. And that's great because that's like the point of our show. We're being weird. We're being different. Uh, We're not going to have every show be on the same thing. We're going to jump into a little serious now, now and then when we want to. And then we're going to jump to be a little bit more ridiculous, just like this one. You guys got me singing in this episode. Please don't hate me. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, we hope you have a wonderful day and we'll. yeah 
We'll catch you on the flip side. That's what I was. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> hey, Miranda, give him a good outro. We'll catch you on the flippity flop. Nice. We'll catch you on the flippity flippity flop. That's called a one-up, friends, and you have a good night. <laughs>